CataractCoach.com. Zion or weakness during capsular axis. These radial wrinkles indicate poor global zonular support. Let me show you the case here. Relatively small eye, about a five-ish millimeter pupil, and we try to poke in with the forceps. This is what I always do. And look how look how loose the lens capsule is. It's so loose that I'm unable to poke in with my forceps like I do 99% of the time. So that's a good hint that there's global zonular weakness. You're not going to be able to do your regular technique here. So I'll use a sharp cystotome to puncture the lens capsule now. There it is. But by starting a rexus with the forceps, I can always tell, hey, is this loose or not? And so it's an important hint there. So I did start off with the cystotome, which is nice and sharp. And obviously, it's easier to penetrate the lens caps with a sharper instrument. And now I'll get that good, solid 5 millimeter rexus. Again, the pupil is just slightly larger than 5 millimeters. You can see marks on the cornea, meaning we're going to place a toric lens. And so we'll get the rexus. Now, good news is during the rexus creation, there's not a whole lot of wrinkling of the lens capsule. So that's not too bad. So there is some zonal laxity, but it's not terrible. And so for the technique here, let's just do a phaco chop. Let's go buzz in this nucleus here, get the chopper in, get that split in half there, two halves. Be helpful if I got my knuckle out of the way. There you go. And now when the, we can hold one half at bay, bring up the other. Notice how I brought one piece up while the other chopper held the other piece out of the way to create more of a gap, make it easier to bring the piece up. And so now that first piece can be aspirated and wolfed down pretty quickly. It's not that dense of a nucleus, despite the patient's advanced age. So we'll take that cataract out, and then we'll take the other piece out. And we're going to watch carefully for zonular weakness, for further weakness. Now, the question is, do you need to put in a capsule tension ring or not? Well, maybe not. I'm not sure if it's going to be a huge benefit here. Again, you were normal during the rexus creation, other than starting the rexus. So there is some laxity for sure. It's not a very tight anterior lens capsule. But while I, we tore the rexus after starting with the cystotome, it didn't wrinkle up too much. We didn't need counter traction to get it accomplished. Nothing like that. This all looks pretty good. Now... We'll do the cortex removal. This is an important step that gives a lot of hints. As you do the cortex removal, watch carefully and look at the rexus edge. If the rexus edge moves during cortex removal, that's obviously not a great sign. That's a sign that means the zymes are really bad. But as we take out the cortex here, look, the edge of the rexus pretty much is rock solid. doesn't really move much. So we'll finish up the cortex removal here. And I'm still debating, do I put in a capsular tension ring or not? And you know, I don't think I really need it. So yeah, there was weakness of the zymes evidently at the beginning with the radial wrinkles of, of the lens, lens capsule. But here, it's pretty good, actually. And there was no movement at all during cortex removal. And I cleaned up the bag pretty nicely. Hmm, I think we're just going to go with the lens. Just put the eye on in the eye. And so let's put our cohesive viscoelastic and fill the bag up. There we go. And so that's a nice deep bag, good looking rexus. And now going into a little capsule polishing. Certainly if there is a weak zonal support, we don't want to have too much capsular contraction or phimosis. So getting rid of that, some of that um, lens of material on the undersurface of the anterior rim can help. Here comes our lens, nice tight fit of this higher diopteric power lens. Get that in the capsule bag. Looks like a toric monofocal lens, so deliver that. And once we get that into position, we finish up this case. So yeah, no, no capsule retention ring needed here. So one of the reasons I like to do the uh, capsule rexus with just the forceps, poking in with just the forceps, first, it's very efficient. I don't need a cytotome for every case. It's uh, certainly more efficient in that manner. It's less time, money saved. I also get a very important hint that I would not have otherwise received. I would not have known. If I used only the cystotome to start this rexus, I would have gone through this case thinking it's a pretty normal kind of case with normal zonal support, but that's not the case here. And so we'll get this torque lens lined up. You can see the marks on the cornea. We're just lining those up with the lens, the marks on the lens, the torque marks. So I like to use those, uh, the forcep technique here because it gives me additional information or data for every case that I do here. And you can see this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. You can see the Purkinje light reflex on the cornea. Once that parallax is fixed, you'll see or lined up. The toric marks of the cornea line up beautifully with the toric marks on the lens. And this patient had a beautiful outcome the very next day. Now, the patient had, it's been about a year since the patient surgery. I dug up an old one for you guys. And I'm happy to say it's been super stable in that last year. No issues at all. And But we'll watch the patient once a year. 
um, just to make sure there's no late dislocation. A little triamcinolone is going to help, preservative free. That's going to help quell any inflammation post-op and seal that up with some uh, BSS. And then let's put a little small aliquot here, moxifloxacin for uh, antibiotic uh, endophthalmitis prophylaxis. And so here we go, end of the case. Let's check. All the incisions look great. So if you see that wrinkling in the anterior lens capsule during your rectus creation, now you know what it means and what to do.